Seeing into the future isn't nearly as difficult as you'd think it is. Destiny 2 is a game that throws information at you. You've got a radar, you've got a kill feed, you've got a scoreline, you've got points of interest with status markers that you can see no matter where you are. You've got teammate markers that show you who and where someone is and whether or not they're engaging someone. I could go on, but the point is that after a certain amount of time playing this game, tapping into this flow of information becomes less of a mystery and more about practice. We talked about how to do this in GameSense 102, and after a while of playing actively, you've got a pretty good idea of what's coming next when you pick up on the tells that we talked about in that video. And yet, for so many still, it's one thing to know what's about to happen to you and another thing to stop it altogether. For these people, there's two things that are missing from their game. Two key elements that help solidify everything. Can you guess what they are? My name is Ascendant Nomad, and I'm your Crucible Doctor. Seeing the future is basically just building experience with the lessons learned from winning fights, and recollecting those experiences for the heat of the moment. Call it learned behavior, call it muscle memory, call it whatever you like. The 1000th time you see a shotgun is infinitely less jarring than the first, second, or third time. You see the shotgun, you see the beeline movement, you see the slide in, you look up, you see your controller flying across the room. For all of its diversity, Crucible can feel at times fairly predictable. Learning this predictability isn't too hard actually. Just think about your experiences in the Crucible. You'll find that there's a lot of sameness between players, usually in loadout or playstyle. Some of this is influenced by the meta, some of it is copying what streamers and YouTubers do, Either way, it's not too hard to distill the player base down into a number of distinctly memorable profiles that are very common. Whilst in the past I've talked about how no two engagements are ever the same, the reality is that while that's technically true, a lot of them are just variations of the same fights, especially when dealing with people who use special ammo weapons. I won't bore you with listing these typical engagement fights. I think you have a general idea of how snipers, shotguns, and fusion rifle mains get their kills. That's beside the point. And it's also not why you're here. We do go into typical player profiles and these engagement fights when we stream gameplay reviews over at Twitch every Wednesday and Sunday. But hey, you want to see into the future, to see them coming and win anyways, right? Well, you're looking for an answer here that doesn't have a straightforward line of questioning. It's actually quite substantive and requires you to get more thoughtful about your game, to be more cerebral. If you just want to have fun and play the game mindlessly, stop this video right now. If you are just curious about this video to see where it goes, then now's the time where you decide if you care enough to think about your game differently. If you don't, I invite you to write, haha, dead game ruined by stasis in the comments below, just so I can see how many of you badly need my upcoming video on scrub mentality. If you are interested in thinking about your game differently, welcome to the beginning of the video. When it comes to assessing any point in the match, there are two perspectives you can adopt. There's the micro perspective, which focuses on the stuff in front of you. The engagement, the match status, zones, that hunter about to shatter dive you, all that good stuff. Then there's the macro perspective, which seeks to look at the entirety of the game that's passed in order to better predict what's coming next. And this involves focusing on the individual players themselves, learning who they are as players and how they're likely to act in any given situation. The micro is important to win the fight right now. The macro is important to win the game. But in order to predict the future, we need to know how to use both. We're going to take a middle out approach. The micro perspective being the middle, the macro being the out. This approach can be charted out in three concrete steps. Step one, snapshot. Game Sense 101 was all about asking yourself, what is the most likely thing that's going to happen next? GameSense 102 was about applying this question to win engagements more regularly. In this video, which is effectively GameSense 103, both of these lessons are the first step of a three-step process into taking your game to the next level. The first step is to just gather some data, get into fights, make your snapshots, win or lose, doesn't really matter. In 6v6 game modes, you want to find the problematic guardians quickly and observe how they're playing. This can be done in as little as three engagements. Sometimes, with clever guardians, it can take longer. In 3v3 game modes, 
The potential for a dangerous guardian to shine is even higher. Identify them quickly. You'll know when you see them. Keep throwing yourself in there. Keep acquiring data through your snapshots. The more you look at the game on a micro level now, the better you'll be able to see the weave of patterns in the macro level later. Step two, analysis. By now, you'll have figured out who's strong and who's troubling you. This is where we turn on our brains a little bit more. Without doing anything different to the way you're playing now, I need you to start looking a bit deeper. Inspect that person's loadout, build and subclass, and look at how they're playing. Do they lead with that duality or do they stay on their primary? Are they using their empowering rift their 120s to greater effect or no? Are they rushing in or rotating smartly? Come up with some questions for this player and let them answer through their actions. The most common ones I ask straight away are, number one, are they aggressive or passive? Number two, are they playing with their team or flying in solo? Number three, do they use cover and pace their engagements? Number four, are they leading with their abilities or their guns? Number five, is their movement fluid? The answers to these questions don't come immediately. They come after a few engagements. I find it particularly useful to observe a player in my death screen as it highlights their body and shows their movement. For me, movement is the number one differentiator between a good and a bad player, but you already knew that. You might get lucky by happening upon an angle where you can see them engaging someone else, but your best bet to gather this information is to physically engage them. Bring the fight to them and don't turn down an opportunity to fight them if you have the health and the ammo. See how they respond. Once you have the answers to a few of those questions, you can start to see what kind of player they are how they engage, how they move, how they shoot. A lot of this is dependent on the playstyle and build, so during a death screen you can inspect them if you want to better inform your analysis. Now, we start to move away from the middle, moving away from the micro, looking towards the macro, and start picking the game apart. Step three, uno reverso. In Latin, uno reverso roughly translates to, not today, Satan. You have the profile of this player. You have a rough to good understanding of what makes them tick and what makes them shine. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to discipline yourself to not take the engagements that favor them. In threes, this is pretty easy. You stay out of that sniper lane. If they're a stasis user, don't clump with your teammates. Don't play distance with their no time to explain. You have an entire map to work with, so rotate and find different angles in if you're getting dominated. The beauty of threes is that you have a lot of freedom to move. Use that movement to find different approaches and different options to unsettle the opponents. In sixes, well, it's chaos. Embrace that chaos. Let others do the work for you so you can stop that one guy targeting you over and over. Play with your teammates as shields and play your counter game. Whatever it is that they need to make sure they can pull off a kill, you do the opposite of. In the heat of the moment, this is not easy. This requires a pretty solid understanding of how the game works, what weapons perform in which ways in the Crucible, as well as some pretty bowler map knowledge to help you tie it all together with fluid movement. But remember, a lot of the fights are just variants of each other. It's instinctual in that you can kind of feel your way through the problem and arrive at the solution naturally. That's what happens when, um, you know, a game has good gunplay. Remember that? And you know what? 90% of the time, you don't need a loadout change. You just need a positioning change. 90% of the time when you die in Destiny 2, it's your fault, as a result of bad positioning. With stasis, that's more true than ever before. But if you've been on this channel for a while, you knew that already from the video in the top right. Discipline yourself to not fight the fights that they want to have. Try different things. It's a war of attrition and there will be some give and take. Over time, you'll hone your different approaches to your enemies and have different solutions for those common types of players we discussed earlier. But wait, there's more. Step four, live, die, repeat. The final stage is all about repeating and perfecting this craft over multiple games with different calibers of opponents. In Trials of Osiris, you need to be able to adapt to your opponents within a round or two if they've got the leg up on you, tapping into the flow of information around you, identifying player archetypes by build, 
loadout, movement, and gunplay. Responding to it in kind by adjusting your playstyle and positioning to negate the aspects that make their game fly. It's a pretty important thing to learn, if I'm honest. Every player who goes flawless in trials can either do this, or has someone on their team who can do it and tell their team what to do. A lot of it can be chalked up to experience, but like I said in the beginning of this video, there's plenty of folks who have literally sunk tens of thousands of hours into this franchise since Destiny 1, who are not yet good at the Crucible. And I said, there's two key elements that they're missing at the beginning. One of those elements is self-awareness. An honest-to-God self-assessment on how good you are or how bad you are, with no pride or pretense. Knowing where you fall on the grand ladder of chaos will help you realize just how far you need to go and how far away the ceiling actually is. It also just keeps your own ego and pride in check and can help with tilt in a massive way. If you're interested in a video on how to know how good you are, leave a comment below that like button. The second element is one we actually already discovered and talked about in step three, and it's the most important of all. Discipline. Discipline is the number two differentiator between good and bad players. You need the discipline to lay next to cover. You need the discipline to not only figure out why you're getting sniped, but how to stop yourself from dying over and over and over in the same way. You need the discipline to disengage when your life is in danger. You need the discipline to know when you're beat in the moment and need to retreat. You need the discipline to follow through on the steps we've talked about in the heat of the moment. One of my oldest lines that I've been feeding to my students since 2017 is that you are only as good as your commitment to getting better. You need videos that cover the basics, yes. You need ideas from friends, streamers, YouTubers. You need a good mentality, a positive one, that sees through the bullshit of Destiny 2 more often than not. But you need the discipline to execute, to hold yourself accountable, to own up to your own mistakes instead of blaming everyone else and whatever ability or weapon they're using for the fact that you just died out of cover, again, for the ninth time in the same control game. So if the question is, how do you see them coming and win anyways? The answer is, figure out their playstyle, then discipline yourself to play their counter playstyle. It's much easier said than done. You kind of have the blueprint now. If you like this video, you know what to do. I'm Ascender Nomad, and I'm your Crucible Doctor. See you next time. Cheers.